All right, Judges chapter 6 in your Bibles tonight, Judges 6, and it's a blessing to be here and to see each of you, some old faces, no offense, uh, but some new faces too, and it's always, it's always good to see both the old and the new, uh, folks we've known for a long time and uh, folks that we get to meet for the first time tonight. Um, thank you for being here. And uh, I trust that the Lord will encourage all of our hearts together tonight uh, from his word. On Wednesday evenings in, uh, in our services, um, we've been taking a journey through some of the different names of God that we find in scripture. And um, so I'd like to, I'd like to share uh, some thoughts from one of our recent studies and uh I, I've taken kind of as a theme verse for our study through these names of God, Psalm 9 in verse 10. Let me read it for you. Psalm 9, 10 says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Again, that first part of the verse is what I'd like to uh what I'd like to, for us to think about as we begin this, this evening, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. And the truth about the name of God as we find it in Scripture, many different forms, many different titles of God in Scripture, each name gives us a glimpse of a different aspect of God's nature's character. And that's the way that the the names of the hebrews were right they said something about the person that owned the name and it's no different with the names that we find for god throughout the scriptures but the point that the psalmist makes is that as we know the name of god in other words as we know the many aspects of god's great character we come to trust him a little more. The more we know about what God's names mean or who God is, the more we trust him. And that's the, isn't that the, the goal of the Christian life to know God? Isn't that, wasn't that Paul's number one desire that he for, forsook everything else for? To know the excellency or to have the excellency of the knowledge of Christ? And so that's what we're here for. And so I want to take one of the names that we find for God in Scripture and to take a few minutes here uh, to unpack uh, the truth about who God is. We find that name in verse 24 of Judges 6, where Gideon builds an altar unto the Lord and calls it Jehovah Shalom. Now, if you've been saved for any length of time, you're probably familiar with the Hebrew word shalom and its meaning. What is the meaning? Peace. Jehovah shalom. In other words, the Lord, our peace. Now, the word shalom has uh, a broader meaning than what we typically think of when we think of the word peace. Peace is a wonderful way to translate the word shalom, but it's translated other, other ways in the scriptures. And I want to give you some of those other translations to kind of broaden the, the meaning of the word shalom in our, in our hearts and minds. Shalom is the quality of being sound or of being whole or complete and when you hear those words, you understand why we say shalom means peace. To be sound, to be whole, to be complete, nothing lacking. And Gideon came to know God as the one who was shalom for him. He was his peace. He was the one who made him sound, who filled him and made him whole and complete, where he was lacking in and of himself. Shalom is an attribute of God. There is nothing that God lacks, is there? 
And as Jehovah Shalom, he is willing and able to grant himself to his people so that they too can be whole, can be completely at peace. I want you to notice with me in Judges 6, beginning in verse 11. Of course, God's people are in captivity to the people in the land of Midian. And there came an angel of the Lord, verse 11, and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abiezrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now we find in this chapter and the chapters to follow that God had a plan to use Gideon to free the Israelites from oppression by the Midianites. But Gideon lacked what he needed to accept and to fulfill God's plan. But God graciously addresses his need and provides for Gideon the peace that he needs. In at least four ways that I see here in chapter 6. And so I'd like, to, I'd like you to notice, number one, that God's peace was granted to Gideon through the promise of his purpose. God's purpose, that is. God's peace was granted through the promise of his purpose. You'll notice in verse 12, the Lord says to him, or the angel of the Lord says, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon responds in verse 13, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers have told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? There in verse 14, we find that God is granting his peace to Gideon through the promise of his purpose. What does he tell Gideon he will do? He'll save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. You see, Gideon lacked peace because he didn't understand what God was doing. And he communicates that there in verse 13. If the Lord be with us, why then has all this befallen us? Where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of? In essence, Gideon's saying, where have you been, God? What are you doing? I don't understand. This doesn't make sense. And God graciously grants through the process of what we see taking place in chapter 6, grants peace to Gideon through the promise of his purpose. Secondly, we find God granting his peace to Gideon through the promise of his presence. You'll notice in verse 12, what are the first five words the angel of the Lord says to Gideon? The Lord is with thee. And you'll notice down in verse 16, Gideon Gideon responds in verse 15 and says to the angel of the Lord, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. So here God grants peace to Gideon through the promise of his presence. Gideon lacked peace. He he had this sense of inadequacy about himself. You see that in verse 15. Wherewith shall I save Israel, he says. My family is poor. I'm the very least in my family, in my father's house. He lacked peace because he sensed an inadequacy in himself. But God says, I'll be with you. I'll go with you. I want you to notice thirdly that God's peace not only was granted through the promise of his purpose and the promise of his presence, but number three, it was granted through the promise of his provision. 
In verse 16, he says, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. In essence, God's saying, look, I'm with you. You're going to get the job done. In other words, I'm going to provide everything that you need to accomplish what I'm calling you to do. And so God, excuse me, Gideon lacked peace again because he had this inadequacy, this sense of inadequacy within himself. I'm nobody. I don't have what's needed. This is what he's saying in his mind and saying to the angel of the Lord. But God reassures him with the promise of his provision. And then thirdly, I want you to notice that God granted his peace to Gideon through the proof of his person. You'll notice in verse 16, Gideon says to the angel of the Lord, If now I have found grace in thy sight, and show, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid, a kid and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. The angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. You see, Gideon requested a sign, a sign that God was the one who was speaking with him through the angel. You'll notice in verse 17 again, he says, if now I have found grace in thy sight, if what you're saying is true, if I can count on you, and if indeed you are calling upon me to lead the people in victory over the Midianites, he says, then show me a sign that it's you, Lord, that it's you, Jehovah, that's talking with me. In verse 13, notice how he addresses the angel of the Lord here. L-O-R-D with just a capital L. Verse 15 he said unto him, O my Lord, L-O-R-D, with just a capital L. But now notice in verse 22, after the angel of the Lord departs out of his sight, after the sign that indeed it was Jehovah that was speaking to him and calling him and promising his purpose and his presence and his provision and proving his person, in verse 22, when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, capital G, capital O, capital D, Yahweh, Jehovah. He was convinced by God's gracious proving that he was indeed being called of the Lord, that he was indeed being provided with the purpose of God and the presence of God and the provision of God to indeed smite the Midianites and free God's people from oppression. Notice verse 23, And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, Thou shalt not die. God in his gracious love and his patience and his grace provided for Gideon the peace, the completeness, the wholeness that he needed to be ready to do what God had called him to do. And he says, peace be unto thee. The Lord who is Peace is the God who makes his sufficiency available and active in the lives of his people. And Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom for Gideon is Jehovah Shalom for you. 
He's the one who will make you whole. He's the one who will complete you in your moment of inadequate feelings, in your moment of lacking this or that. Jehovah Shalom is the one who comes and promises his purpose and his presence and his provision. It even proves that, yes, it is me speaking to you, calling you. And the Lord who is our peace makes his sufficiency available. He makes his shalom ours. Psalm 29, 11, the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Psalm 85, 8, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. Isaiah 26, 12, Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. You see, God is our peace. He doesn't just impart a feeling of peace. Many times we're looking for a feeling. We want to feel peaceful. But when we look for a feeling, when we search for a feeling, when we think the answer is a feeling, we miss God himself. And God imparts himself and he desires to impart himself to you and me as he is our peace. He imparts himself to us in many ways that brings about this shalom in our hearts, this wholeness, this completeness. God is truth, and his truth imparts peace where there's a lack of knowledge. He is forgiveness, and his forgiveness imparts peace where there's guilt. He is power, and his power imparts peace where there's weakness. He is present and his presence imparts peace where there is aloneness or loneliness he is love and his love imparts peace where there is inadequacy he is justice and his justice imparts peace where there is injustice whatever you lack this evening god is that for you as jehovah shalom the one who will make you whole, the one who will complete you. God imparts himself to the believer through the Holy Spirit that indwells us. And I want to point out here in the last few minutes a couple of thoughts that you and I need to grab a hold of if we expect or if we desire, if we want God to be our peace. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15, Paul implores these believers to let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God. If you want Jehovah Shalom to complete you, to make you whole, to fill the voids of your life and of your heart, then you must let you must surrender allowing the peace of god to rule is in part a matter of yielding control of every part to him alone surrender but the second part here for you and me is faith as well and we find that in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, a very familiar verse, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. So not only if you desire Jehovah Shalom to be your peace, must you surrender, but you must also depend. You must depend because God as your peace has to be received through dependent faith. We have all kinds of schemes, we have all kinds of ideas about how we can how we can bring peace to our lives or how we can make ourselves enough to do this or to do that or to make it through this problem or that problem. 
But God can only be your wholeness, your completeness, your peace as you depend upon him to be that for you. Surrender and peace. You know, it's easy to feel that we don't have what we need. If you're like me, you feel that way pretty often. It's easy to feel that we don't have what we need. It's possible to be, see, to, to be deceived into thinking that we don't have what we need. But it is vital to know and to believe that we have all that we need in Christ. He, as Jehovah Shalom, makes his people complete in him. The Apostle Paul says in the second chapter of Colossians, verses 9 and 10, 9 and 10, in him, in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's nothing that Jesus doesn't have that God has. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye, he's writing to believers, ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power and so if you know christ you have all the wholeness all the completeness of god available to you as you surrender yourself to god and as you depend upon him to be your peace